All right, so here are five things that happen when you actually make time for self-care. The first of which is pretty obvious, avoiding burnout. So if you've never had burnout, let me just paint a picture for you. It's a state where you're just done. You got nothing left. You can't make big decisions. You can't make small decisions. You have nothing left creatively. You may even be really irritable as a person because you're out of patience. You are just fully overextended and the mind has basically just shut down. This happens often when we take on too much. We put too much on our plate or we are working too many hours and not getting enough sleep. But a big piece of it is that we haven't made time for self-care. And that looks different for all sorts of people. So when you engage in self-care, it's really an act of making time for yourself that fills your cup in whatever way uh, is unique to you. Some people like to... um, do things that are enriching to themselves, reading books or uh, learning something, taking a course, doing things like that. Other people like to get active and move their body, such as exercise or, um, you know, going for a run, playing a sport, something like that. And then it could be things like doing something nice for yourself that acknowledges, um, you know, your time for you, something that you just enjoy, getting your nails done, um, going out to the movies, um, things like that. But generally speaking, self-care I've found, at least in my experience, is always best done, you know, at the point where you really need it. It's a, it's a celebration. It's a time to reward yourself for doing good work or really any time you feel like you need it. Um, but you do it as soon as you feel like you need it. And that's one of the ways that you're going to get yourself to avoid burnout because by the time you hit burnout, self-care isn't really even, um, it's not really warding off anything at that point. It is, it is just you trying to claw your way back into being Uh, a reasonable human at any given uh, point, right? So um, avoiding burnout is one of the biggest things that comes from taking advantage of um, making some time for self-care for yourself. I would say that the second thing is feeling better physically, mentally, emotionally. Uh, I know as a parent of a toddler and an infant that when I am sleep deprived, my patience is at an all-time low. Uh, So I don't show up as my best self uh, either in my marriage or with my kids, or even with my colleagues and people that I do work with, because I am running on empty. And I know that uh, when I do get enough sleep, and when I do take that time where I feel like I've I've not just been serving everybody else, but I actually have some time for myself and the things that I want to do, then I feel spiritually and emotionally more open and more free to be able to contribute and do things, because I don't feel like I've just been giving, giving, giving. Self-care is partially about taking for yourself Uh, which can sound selfish, but it's really not. We all need it. If we don't have anything left in our tank, then we have nothing left to give. So by taking that time for self-care, we have, you know, time for ourselves where we feel better physically. So it could be things like going for a run. You're going to feel better physically by doing some exercise and doing some movement, getting better sleep. So all of those are the sort of self-care things that are going to move you towards feeling better physically. Uh, You'll feel better mentally because when you take that time to stop, you give your your brain time to process what's going on. You give yourself the ability to sort through the things that you've been thinking instead of continually adding to it and adding to it and adding to it. Self-care is that point where you give yourself a little bit of a break, a little bit of a breather, and you allow yourself to kind of catch up. And then I think uh, similar to both of those, both physically and uh, and mentally, when you're drained, that doesn't leave you with very much emotionally. So your resilience to look out at the things in the world that might be upsetting and, and not let it affect you personally and in the deepest possible way that doesn't exist as much when you haven't taken the time for self-care. So the second big reason and the second big thing that you get when you uh, make yourself that time and space for self-care is you feel better physically, mentally, and emotionally. Third thing would be that you actually have an improved output, improved work. And work doesn't necessarily have to mean at work, something you do professionally. It can mean anything that you're doing. Whenever you are, you could be trying to fix up something in the house. You could be trying to, uh, you know, Um, build something for your kids or do something for your partner, whatever it might be. But the quality of that work that you're going to do, both creatively uh, as it relates to the accuracy of the task, you're going to have a clearer head and a clearer mind and more of a full cup to be able to give from yourself creatively and and, uh, in terms of the amount of effort you're able to put into it. If you're properly rested, if you feel like you've had time for yourself, if you feel like you um, have done the things that you need for yourself so you can be at your best, you're going to be able to bring improved output, whether that's at work or at home. 
Uh, and especially when you're at work, if you're burned out and you haven't taken time for self-care, you're just going to come in. You're just going to feel exhausted. You're going to feel like everything else that gets added to your plate is just one more thing. But if you can kind of clear the deck every now and again and give yourself a chance to just take some big, deep breaths and and recenter yourself so you can get back out there, you're going to have a much better output and um, an improved um, quality of the work that you're doing. Uh, the fourth thing I would say uh, that you get from paying attention to self-care is improved relationships. And this really does dovetail with some of the other things I've said about not being burned out, about feeling better physically, mentally, and emotionally, is that when you have that space and you're not burned out and you're not feeling overwhelmed and you're not feeling at the end of your rope emotionally or cluttered mentally or exhausted physically, you're going to have the time and the space to make room for other people who may be feeling that way. You're going to be a better listener. You're going to be able to contribute more wholeheartedly and empathetically to other people because you've now got some, uh, some juice. You know what I mean? You've got some fuel in your tank. You're able to actually contribute and give to others. So it's going to improve your relationships. When you have that time for self-care and you're well-rested and you feel good, you're going to have more patience. You're going to have more empathy. You're going to have more compassion uh, because no longer is everything feeling like it's taking from you, but you feel like you actually have something to give. Uh, and that's a really big thing. The fifth thing I would say that you get from self-care is self-improvement. Because when you do all the things that I've already mentioned, you're actually giving yourself the space to grow. You're actually putting yourself in a position to take advantage of opportunities as they, as they come along. You're able to engage in activities fully wholeheartedly and creatively and strategically because you have a clear mind uh, and you have um, the energy to be able to approach those things. So I think that, and, and especially if part of your self-care routine is actually enriching uh, activities, uh, like one of the things I really love to do to take care of myself is read a book that I find interesting, learn something new. Those are all sorts of things that actually make me feel a lot better and help me to both improve myself, but also feel like I have something left in my tank. So those are five things that you get from paying attention to self-care.